Today I'm going to be sharing with you five unique methods of non-sexual intimacy. Each one inspired by couples in the Bible who exemplified these qualities. Let's journey through the biblical times and discover love and profound intimacy shared by couples who understood love beyond the physical. We'll explore how shared purpose, trust, vulnerability, communication, and understanding can create a bond that transcends the physical and enrich your relationship in ways that you may never have imagined. Intimacy, as we know, is not merely a physical connection. It's a combination of emotional, intellectual, and spiritual bond that deepens our relationship, creating a tapestry of trust, love, and respect. In a Christian perspective, spiritual form of intimacy is very important. This is because it provides a foundation that strengthens the bond between partners. The first method of non-sexual intimacy was exemplified by my favorite couple in the Bible. Guess who they are? Abraham and Sarah. And that is shared purpose. I love this couple so much because their story is one of the most compelling narratives in the Bible. A testament to the power of shared purpose in forging a deep, intimate bond between two people. Abraham and Sarah were not just husband and wife, they were partners in a divine mission. God had chosen them to be the parents of a great nation. This was no small tax at all and it was one that required absolute faith, not just in God, but also in each other. Their shared purpose was the foundation of their relationship. It was what kept them together through trials, tribulation, and even in moments of doubt. In pursuing their divine calling, they had to rely on each other's strengths, support each other's weaknesses, and above all, they had to believe in their shared vision. This was not a purpose that could be achieved independently. It was one that required their combined efforts, their shared faith, and their united hearts. This shared purpose created an intimacy between Abraham and Sarah that went beyond the physical. It was a bond that was built on shared dreams, mutual support, and unwavering faith in their divine mission. It was a bond that was tested and strengthened by the challenges that they faced together. Their shared purpose created a bond that transcended the physical, making their relationship a beacon of intimacy and love. This is the first method of intimacy, a shared dream, a shared vision, a shared journey. It's about being partners in life, not just partners in love. Now I'm going to be combining the second and third non-sexual intimacy together, and that is trust and vulnerability. And this was exemplified by Ruth and Boaz. Their story is a classic biblical example of the power of trust and vulnerability in building a deeper connection. Ruth, a Moabite widow, left her homeland to accompany a mother-in-law, Naomi, back to Bethlehem. Despite the uncertainty and potential hardship, Ruth trusted God with her future. Boaz, on the other hand, was a man of great wealth and respect. He was moved by Ruth's dedication and loyalty to Naomi. He admired her trust in God and her courage to leave her familiar life behind. In response to Ruth's vulnerability, Boaz extended kindness and protection over her, showing his own vulnerability in the process. Their story is a testament to the second and third method of intimacy, which is trust and vulnerability. It wasn't the physical attraction that brought them together, but their trust in God and their willingness to be vulnerable with each other. Their relationship was built on shared experiences, mutual respect, and faith in God's providence. Ruth trusted Boaz enough to approach him on the threshing floor. A bold move that required courage and vulnerability. Boaz, in turn, trusted Ruth's intentions and respected her courage, further deepening their bond. In their trust and vulnerability towards each other, Ruth and Boaz found a deep and profound intimacy. Their story reminds us that true intimacy goes beyond the physical attraction. It's about trust, vulnerability, and a shared journey of faith. Would you please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell if you haven't? Share this video with someone and I would love to hear your thoughts and comments. So please drop them in the comment section. Thank you. I'm going to be combining the last two methods of non-sexual intimacy 
as well and this is communication and understanding and these was exemplified by my all-time second favorite couple in the bible i know you already guessed right it's joseph and mary mary and joseph's relationship was fortified by mutual understanding and a strong communication their story unfolded in a time of great uncertainty mary a young woman was chosen to carry the son of god the news was brought to her by an angel and she accepted it with faith joseph a betrothed discovered her pregnancy before their marriage in the face of social norms that could have led to her public disgrace joseph chose to handle the situation with grace and understanding he had a dream where an angel confirmed mary's story joseph's faith and trust in god's plan allowed him to accept this extraordinary situation joseph's action speaks volume about the importance of understanding and communication in a relationship imagine the depth of their conversation the strength of their trust and the magnitude of their faith they had to rely on each other for emotional support, to maintain their faith, and to navigate the challenging paths ahead of them. Their shared experience, their shared responsibility, and their shared faith created a bond of intimacy that was strong and durable. Through the stories of these couples, we've discovered the profound depth of non-sexual intimacy. We've seen how intimacy surpasses the boundary of the physical, reaching into the soulful dimension of shared purpose, trust, vulnerability, communication, and understanding. As always, I will be sharing a scripture with you for the week. And today's scripture is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3 and verse 5. It says, The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife, and likewise the wife to her husband do not deprive each other except by mutual consent for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer then come together again so that satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control thank you for watching this video i hope you found it helpful if you did please make sure you are subscribed to my channel turn on the notification bell and share this video with a friend also, I'd love to hear from you, so kindly drop a comment. Let me know what you think in the comment section, and I promise to respond to your comment. Till I come your way again next week, it's a goodbye.